Hi, everybody. This is Larry Christensen presenting Game of the Day from Round 1 of the Candidates Tournament being played at the moment in London, England. And uh, the first round saw four draws, pretty tepid affair today. And it's probably, no doubt, it's the calm before the storm. It'll get a lot, lots more blood and action will come later. But today, the player is kind of just getting adjusted to the tournament. This is a big event. Uh, they're a little nervous, and they're just settling in. Uh, my pick for game of the day was it happens to be the shortest game, and but it was had the only one that really had some sort of tense moment. Uh, Peter Svidler seemed to have, as White, seemed to enjoy a slight advantage against, or even a bit more than that, against Vladimir Kramnik. Uh, but uh, at, a, at the big, uh, most important moment, he failed to find the most uh, testing continuation, and the players uh, eventually had a repetition of moves. And this, and so they had a draw before the regulation move thirty. Now, the other games, uh, all very quiet affairs. Uh, Magnus Carlsen equalized easily with Black against Aronian, Levan Aronian, one of his key rivals. Um, and he had no difficulty drawing. And the same with uh, Alexander Grishuk against Ivan, Va Vasily Ivanchuk. That was also a... Everybody knew that game was going to end in a draw as, move, as early as move 20. And even though it went off to, on to move 45, that would be my second pick for game of the day. Third pick, also rather quiet, was Gelfan versus Rajabov. It did have a mild, very quiet sensation in the opening where uh, Rajabov employed the old Indian formation in a way very seldom seen. Uh, Gelfan played rather too quietly to test that formation, and that game ended in a draw as well, very in a quiet way. So here we go, board our uh, my pick for game of the day. The following short, brief, but um, fairly interesting game: Peter Svedler versus Al Alex uh, Vladimir Kramnik. Svidler, by the way, typically plays one e4, and here, though he has joined the crowd, the burgeoning crowd of d4 players, especially among the elites. And interesting that Cram Nick spurns his beloved Nimzo Indian defense. He that's his usual customary mode of defense against d4, and here he goes for the queen's gambit declined, and. This is thought to be a rather uh, su slight, su slightly suspect, and I'm, this is all relative, but uh, this move order allows white to play C takes D5, the, and with, now E takes D5, that's 90% of the games involve E takes D5. That leads to the notorious exchange variation, which most queen pawn players happily will play against with white. The results favor white in a lopsided way. But Kramnik surprised probably his opponent and others by now playing the semi terish uh, variation of the Queen's Gambit decline, and that has a worse reputation than E takes D5. So this was somewhat surprising. Of course, these players are prepared to the hilt. Um, one can only imagine the number of novelties at uh, in the databases of these players, heavily prepared pet players. Okay, this is all book. By the way, knight f3 is another option, but the e4 is the most challenging. Kramnik plays c5, that's recommended. By the, by the way, Fisher used to play this with black. Tigran Petrosian. Karpov, I think, once or twice. Um, and here, Svidler plays a3. That looks like a strange move, but he 